What's up guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode, yet again, working on the Hemi Coop. What I'd like to try and do is focus on this area here. I want to try and create a piece that we can weld in here that has a decent curve to it, really nail the radius, tie this wheel lip into it with a nice little radius there. I think it's really gonna set the bar as far as just these body lines. Let's see what we can come up with. So if you guys have been following along and watched our previous video on the Hemi Coupe, you will notice that I created a set of dies to use in our power hammer. Those dies were able to create the body line that we really wanted. Um, I am gonna reuse those dies. They are set up in the machine still. The biggest thing with this section here is that we have a very dead flat bottom of the Model A all the way through. And then we have this really nice kick up that goes up and over the rear axle for the 32 frame. So I want to, if I can, and it's not gonna be crazy like the front, but I want to try and match this contour slightly, even if it's not totally perfect. I wanna put a little bit of a curve in this panel here, probably something like that. And then this part would come up like that and then roll into this. And I'm not sure exactly what I'll do here, probably just a, a, a nice little radius, nothing too crazy. And then it flows into this section here. So I'm just gonna line up. I know I have a square edge on the top and bottom, which is gonna help me out big time. Very important that that paper template is as accurate as possible because that is your map. That's what you're gonna be referencing everything off of. So you wanna make sure it's perfect. You can kind of use your hand to get it flat in those certain areas. Obviously this quarter panel has a fair amount of curve. So I want to start making some references. This body line, just kind of using my finger a little bit. Now we have obviously a bit of an indication of where everything's gonna sit. So this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> so body line, dead straight, comes in, subtle curve, kind of matching this little one here, and then we'll tie this guy into it. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna do this all out of one piece, which would be really cool, or, if I do it out of multiple pieces, because I don't really know. I'm kind of out of stump. You're probably ye yelling at the TV right now saying, do it this way, but I can't hear you, so. Okay, so what we have here is the original setup. And then now with our kick up and then our little radius to tie it back into the wheel well. So I'm kind of challenged on how to do this. Reason being is the way that I've designed the dies, obviously those dies are kind of, they run off the material as you can see. So if you can imagine this is the panel, it's all good to get off there, but then we need to tip or at least flatten this area out so we can then fix it to where the wheel well is gonna go. But this bead's gotta come down and blend into this. So I don't know if that's just gonna be a shaping thing afterwards and maybe I can get the bead roller up close and then the rest of this I just have to get on the sandbag and try and use like a chisel and tip it out. Having a little bit of difficulties with that as far as just like how to do it. Um, but what I'd like to do is 
take this now and transfer it onto a piece of steel so I know all my reference points. I need to add material on this side, this side, the bottom, so I know where everything is gonna bend. We also need to give this whole initial flat panel a fair amount of shape in the English wheel prior to actually doing anything to it. All right, so we got the same lower die that we had in with the front portion. It's just a 36 radius die. Um, and we're just gonna put a little bit of shape in this panel before we do any tipping or, or breaking as uh, far as flanges go. We're just gonna try and get a little bit of shape um, in this. Again, I mentioned this in their previous video. I am by no means a master of the English wheel. I have tons and tons of learning still to do on it to really understand it. I think the, the biggest thing is just consistency and to not have too much pressure right away. You really want to sort of creep up on the, the shape that you're trying to create because once you've put too much in, it's really hard. If not, you can't really go back. So you, um, you essentially want to just sort of have like a medium pressure and do multiple passes until you are kind of at your desired shape or curve that you want. All right, so now we have a fair amount of shape in that panel, which is really nice. So it's got both like a three-dimensional curve, both this way and this way is what we were, what we were trying, to, uh, trying to achieve and we've done so. So now we're gonna go over to the tipping die and I'm gonna tip this flange so that we can actually get it in those dies that I made for the power hammer. I just got a light here to help me eliminate shadows because sometimes I feel when I'm doing bead rolls, I go cross-eyed. Actually not sometimes, all the time.
All right, so these are the dyes that I had made uh, for the previous sweep in that cowl in our previous video. Um, so if you guys wanna know how I made them and you haven't watched it, definitely jump back and, and see. They are set up, I've had them in there since the last time, so we are basically good to go. Um, I have two Clecos with a little piece of angle here, and this angle is to try and stop me. It's uh, So when it comes in, I actually have something to stop against, because what I wanna try and do is, if I can, I'm trying to end the bead before I hit the edge of the panel itself, because when I go to break it, I want to have a nice clean finish so that little overlap of the Model A door will be dead even to where that bead will start. So um, again, it's exactly what the factory is. I'm thinking is if I were to just run it all the way through like that, then we could cut it off and then, you know, I could hammer it out and then we could figure this out. Otherwise, I could potentially come and sort of stop here, but then this part won't get you know, done and it won't have that sort of shape that we want it to. So yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one. If I, if I would do it in a bead roller and I had a different setup, I could easily get this in the bead roller and then, you know, tip this one and kind of have it all as one. But because we're using power hammer and the dies and, and the way that they're designed in order to get the, the shape and the contour that we want, it's a little bit tricky. I'm going to decide as we go. Okay, multiple tries. So I wanna make this out of one piece. This is my goal. Um, I'm kind of still figuring out how to join all this. As you can see, I did hammer the bead back out. We've kind of cut our flange. It's still there, but that's okay because once everything's folded and done, I can kind of hammer and dolly it and make it look pretty. But what I want to do is I wanna get this 
into here. Now, the wheel lip, I was able to use the radius gauge, got a pretty accurate, um, you know, profile. And what I did was I took the lower stepping die out of the uh, kit and I've, I've just rounded the edge off. And then I've brought this tipping die closer up every time, tried different pressures and was able to get a really nice profile. This is kind of it. So rather than this was kind of the first one where it's a, you know, quite a noticeable step, there's a hard edge here and a hard edge here. Whereas we want to have a hard edge on the inside and then kind of have it roll. So you can actually see how it's sort of rolled out. So I'm just gonna go for it. And <laughs> fingers crossed we don't ruin the panel, but there's only one way to do it. And that one way is right now. I'm actually just gonna do one more because I wanna make sure I got the pressure right. All right, here we go. Either gonna win or screw up panel number one. Let's give it a try. Down on the foot. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. Should have just gone to there. But now I've now I've doomed it. Bag. See if we can get this to work. See if we can get this to work. So right now, all I'm doing is using a flat sort of T-dolly and I'm kind of just massaging it this way in order to create just a little bit of form. You can already see that it's, it's kind of coming this way now. This corner bit is, is really coming together, which I'm kind of shocked it was gonna work. Maybe trying to get a bit more depth in here because obviously this bead is way deeper than the one that is on the wheel lip itself. So I'm just trying to kind of make like a nice transition and then just try and smooth all this out here. Wait a bit more about it. What I could do is actually drill a couple holes pretty soon because I'm, I'm happy with where everything's going to be sitting. Um, I might just do like a straight edge off the bottom or off the front to the back, just making sure everything's there and then we could actually kind of tack it or at least drill a few holes so that we could click out into place and then have a look at our references, making sure we're kind of in the right area. Alright, so I sat on the um, sandbag with the hammer and dolly and just did various kind of techniques in order to try and really clean that radius up and I'm super happy with it. I just ran over with the DA and the 80 grit just to kind of take a few tooling marks out. Um, 
I've got it into place, I've squared it all up sort of where I want it um, as far as lines go and making sure that everything is, you know, kind of where it should be. So I've just scribed in behind where I need to make um, a 90 degree break for the door part here and as well as just the inner fender seam here. So this one I'm gonna have to tip with the bead roller and use the tipping die. This one I can just put straight in the magnetic brake and break 90 degrees. So I think um, I'll probably do this one first because it's, it's a little bit easier to kind of fudge this one a bit. I don't really wanna do both and then put it on there. I'd rather do one, hold it out, put the Clecos back into place, making sure that we're in that area that we want to be. But I'm really liking the, the kick up. So it's obviously quite flat and then kicks up here, but you're not really gonna see it until I put this guy in. So you can, um, you can kind of tell under here, obviously this is the straight bit for our, our channel bit for our subframe. Um, and you can kind of just see how much we've, we've gone with it there. So. I'm in the right temperature to get it on. I got the right temperature. Okay, so after a ton of fine tuning, we were able to get exactly what I wanted. Um, I'm really happy that I was able to make it out of one piece, especially. I've got a little bit of black Sharpie on here, and what I want to do is get this fitted back into position so that we can scribe our line and finally get rid of this bottom piece and we can um, get this piece welded in. So it's not going to be probably a full, full weld. Well, it actually will be this bit and we'll be able to planish it. And then this wheel lip will get shaped and shrunk when we go to make our new, um, our new inner wheel arches. And this is just a, an old punch um, that I use and I always just grind it down. There's a lot of life left in this thing. Um, so. What I like to do is use a Sharpie on the panel that I'm scribing, and then I can go on and actually get a really clean scribe line. So I know exactly where to cut. And this way, as long as I creep up to that line, or I can cut it right on that line that I know that these two panels are gonna to come together really clean. I say it all the time, but fitment is the biggest thing. So you wanna make sure you have perfect fitment before you even attempt to start to weld these things. Um, especially when you're with the TIG welder, if you've got a big gap and you're sitting there trying to fill that gap with a bunch of filler rod and you're trying to, um, you know, with that heat, you got your heat kind of going up and down and you're obviously putting in a fair amount of heat into the panel. That's where you're going to get a lot of distortion and a lot of warpage. So the cleaner that that fitment is, spend as much time as you need to to make sure that that is as perfect as possible so that you can just run over that top with a little bit of filler and just keep that consistent heat right across 
so that you can hammer it out and you're not going to have any waves and imperfections. That's going to be your best, best thing. So now you can see how clean this line is. Um, it's just this copper weld through coating. Sometimes with the TIG welder, it can be a little bit difficult, um, but sometimes it's, it's okay. So I've just done it in areas where obviously we're not gonna be able to get to, so I just don't want any bare steel. Sometimes the old finger trigger would be epic for stop and starts, but I always seem to use the foot switch. So the way I have this set up now, I'm probably gonna have to do the old thigh. The old thigh. Work on me, work on me thighs. Again, when you're knocking the weld off too, if you're doing it this way, you don't want to get too much of this material. So you're not going to try and grind this dead flat and get rid of the weld all, all entirely because you're going to be removing a lot of material that you don't want to remove. You just are trying to knock just the top of the weld off if you can in certain areas. Um, and then we can just start to hammer and dolly. I'm just using a standard um, flat face round hammer wherever my dolly is. Hello, dolly. Dolly Parton, wherever you are. All right, so we've basically got it finished up. I need to do a little bit of work right where we've joined them, but I'm not gonna do that until I've actually built this wheel well. You can tell we've obviously cut them out, but it is really nice. There was probably a little bit of stretching in this area, and I ended up using the shrinking disc a little bit and helped amazingly. Um, probably should do a video on using it. I haven't used it a lot, uh, but when I do, it works phenomenal. And so, yeah, it'd probably be kind of neat to show you guys that, but really happy with the way that that turned out. I'm stoked that I was able to do it out of one piece. Um, you know, when I had initially looked at it, I thought maybe I was kind of overcomplicating it, which I usually do, and thought right away, hey, that's probably gonna be like a one to two to three piece job. Um, so it was really neat to be able to put it all in one and uh, you know, utilizing some of those tools. Overall, I think the profile with the bottom of that 32 frame where it kicks up a little bit here and we just have that natural little 
kick up there. It's not too extreme. You know, we obviously kind of wanted everything to have sort of a focal point towards, towards the front. You know, everything's kind of shrugged up and kind of aiming towards that gorgeous DeSoto Hemi. It's just one of those little subtle body lines that majority of people will never see, but we're just hoping that it sort of ties in and gives the body a little bit more flow on this 32 frame because, you know, initially, even in the video prior, talking about how dead flat the bottom of these, um, these Model A coupes are, or Model A bodies in general from 28 to 31. So, you know, now we have that die set up. So even just doing that rust repair panels for other ones, we, we have that there. So those dies will just get put in a drawer. I'll stamp them so we know exactly what they are and we can use them for future things, which is really neat. So again, moving forward on this, gonna finish the, the other side. I got both made, just need to weld them in. Um, and then we are gonna make some really neat uh, wheel wells or inner wheel wells for it. Uh, once those are finished, then we're gonna start to move up into the roof section. Um, these doors have to come off the skins. I have to reskin them. So we will do that and you know, we'll try and get a really nice body line along the bottom. Um, again, I would like to inside here kind of finish this off somehow, whether or not I do have a little piece that kind of comes down with a little body line. Um, I just don't want you to open this up to sort of a, a dead flat piece. You know, your carpet's going to sort of finish on the edge. Uh, I'd like to kind of finish it off a little bit. So when you do open it, it looks like, you know, those it's supposed to be there. So once we do all that, then we'll be working up into the roof section. Um, got lots of work to do up there and in the rear as well. Again, we still need to fit this thing and fix it to, to the body itself. So we got to start working on some neat mounts um, down sort of on the bottom of this B pillar here and on the A pillar as well, and maybe a little front mount off the front um, of the firewall that you're actually gonna see. And what I'd like to do there is actually um, either cast a piece or make one that looks like a casted piece that sort of sits on top of the paint and the top of the frame, which could look really cool. So I got a couple ideas lined up for this, but you know, subtle ones, but you know, just enough to be able to complement the way that this car is going. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, let us know in the comments what you guys think or different techniques that you guys may use. Or if there's questions, please throw us an email. Um, we'd love to get your feedback. We'd love to sort of share with you guys. This is, this is a, you know, a small but big community and we want to, you know, be a part of with everybody as much as we can. So, um, you know, I'm still constantly learning every single day. I'm definitely no master at anything. Uh, but just being really open-minded and, you know, kind of accepting that failure part, which, you know, again, even with this, I sort of accepted that it may not work. And, uh, but, you know, obviously I was happy that it did. It's not always the, the, you know, the way it goes, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you next week on Bennett's Customs. <laughs>